all right welcome back to the channel today we're going to be replacing the coolant reservoir or if not the overflow tank on a 2015 Ford Taurus 3.5 liter v6 and all right so these are some common symptoms because I need to replace this is I already got into it a little bit but the vehicle started to overheat a little bit and it was dumping all sorts of coolant on the floor so I was wondering like maybe I should probably go and check it out so that's what I did I took off these bolts because these vehicles are pretty notorious there's the one down there too these vehicles are pretty notorious for leaking out of the coolant reservoir so it's not like it's a head gasket or a a hose problem now where I found it is down here so you can check like for if it's leaking or you can just look down there right here yeah you see that that's cracked right here and right there is where all the coolant leaks so i'm not sure if this happens when it's full or if it's under pressure when it's hot so today i'm going to show you how to replace it on this Ford Taurus now like i did say before i did already do some of the work because i was trying to figure out what the problem was but to in order for you to do this you're going to take off two bolts one right down there and one over here see where that bolt hole lines up down there like right there and then from there you have a clip that you can pry on like it's right here you can just pull up and out and it should come out and that's how it comes out now you are going to need coolant and the radiator flow i'm going to show you that in a second the part number but what we're going to do is take off this small hose right here now the um, this part right here is a bit longer so you might have to put it a bit more far back like i placed over here and that's how i got it out now I need some needle nose pliers, uh, like these ones right here. And I took off the clip, I angled it sideways like, like that. I pinched it and then I took it out like that. Now it is kind of tough for you to get it out, so once you get it out at a certain amount, you can just go like this. Since you are going to replace it, you can just go like that and slide it out like that. All right. And for the bottom one, it's a bit more trickier, but I think it'll be easier if you can get it out because you can just drag it out like this and then from there you can just pull it from there you can just pull it and i can put your uh, pliers here and here and pinch it down but i am going to use two hands so i'll be right back all right well i got it out so i tried to use the needle nose but they didn't work so i just didn't use this uh type of style pliers now i'm not sure what you call these so if anyone knows then I guess feel free to comment about it but i use this thing i got this pretty cheap off of amazon it's probably like 14 15 dollars somewhere around there and these things are pretty good especially when you um need two hands for something else like when you're trying to pry it off so you can just have this holding onto it and then you can go like that and just slide it out this one's much more easier than the smaller one up there because for that one you got to kind of use extra force but like that i'm gonna show you the um the part so i went and got this dorman part now the part number is six zero three three six four and that's the part number for this let's go cut it open real quick all right so this is what's going to look like out of the box now there is a coolant reservoir now what i've seen this difference about this is that well, first of all, it doesn't have the sticker right here where this empty thing is, but also um, there's a piece of aluminum on the other one. Like, uh, let me show you right here. Pull it out. All right, so it's gonna look like this, and now it's kind of protruding outwards. But this one right here is just inside of it. So hopefully it does the same job. But yeah, that's the only thing I noticed differently about this. That's pretty interesting. All right, so you're gonna put back the coolant hose and everything back how you got it. So it's basically a reverse install. Um, so yeah. All right, so from here you're gonna make sure you put a bolt down there and down there, right about there on this part right here. So there's only two bolts that you gotta do with. Both of these are eight millimeters. I recommend for this you get an extension. Like I use probably like a nine inch extension. <clears throat> nine inch extension for the side and for that one you can just get like a deep well socket for that that's perfectly fine now for that these uh these pliers are here now i use the needle nose because it's much more easier for that for here 
and then use those other pliers I showed you um, for those ones on there. And also what I've seen is that these things also uh, latch on by themselves. So I'm not sure how you unloosen them, but all I just did is like lift up this part right here and then it just let go. So just be careful with that, trying to get your finger caught under there. Put them there. Uh, we should add the coolant now. Oh yeah, also another important thing. Should um, reinstall this piece right here for the AC lines. All right, like so. And yeah, your coolant reservoir should be ready. All right, let me get the coolant. All right, so I got the coolant. I'm using Peak right here. And uh, make sure you got one for your vehicle, like right there for Ford 2011 and up. So I got this one just to make sure I got the right coolant for your, uh, this specific vehicle. Now this also works for any other manufacturer as well, like Chrysler, FCA. Well, Chrysler and FCA are both the same, and GM vehicles right there. But I just use this because I just want to use the recommended type stuff. But I think you can also use this regular, normal, universal coolant, that yellow kind of coolant. But um, from here, you're going to dump your coolant inside. All right, so make sure you grab your funnel. If you are gonna use um, any other type of funnel that you can use with, let's say for oil, which you don't want them to mix coolant and oil, make sure you clean them very well if you can. Just try to get a different funnel. One for each specific kind of kind, you know, for oil changes and coolant flushes or uh, to refill your coolant reservoir. Now from here as well, you see how there's like um, two lines right there. Now you want it to be up to here, this upper line, to make sure because the vehicle is cold. So from there, you're gonna make sure you have proper coolant for the vehicle excuse me you have proper coolant for the vehicle without making it overheat I'm gonna show you how to also make sure you burp out the system as well all right so I filled the bottle well not the bottle but the coolant system with more coolants and uh, this cooling system takes three gallons of coolant so make sure you have three bottles each bottle is one gallon but make sure you add a little bit extra like from here because I filled it up a bit more and make sure you add a bit of extra because once you turn on the vehicle it starts sucking some in because of uh, spots where there's no coolant or there's very little so it can drain down but make sure you don't add too much make sure you also look at it to make sure everything's all perfectly fine now from there we're going to turn on the vehicle and make sure you burp the system properly so it doesn't overheat or get any hot pockets all right so when you turn on the vehicle i'm gonna press here to turn it on like always and make sure you have it on high because when you have it on high you can use um the heater core is gonna suck up the coolant so then the vehicle can take more to make sure that we properly burp the system, make sure you have it like that, like so. And then we're going to go up to the front and check the coolant reservoir. Alright, from there we're going to make sure that the coolant system actually goes down. So it is going down a little bit. Not too much. So it did go down some. Right there. Well, it's actually pretty full, but... Yeah. Alright, I think I actually overfilled it by a little bit. But I am going to take some out so it's not too bad. Alright, and then we're going to let the cooling system uh, take on the cooling. We're going to make sure the vehicle runs. But besides that, I think that should be, be the end for this video. So if you guys find this video helpful or entertaining, then uh, please drop a like and subscribe. You know, comment down below. And I'll see you in the next one.